All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to start with your name. Um, if you're not sure about writing your name in block letters, you can just write uh, the word artists like I am. Um, you're gonna use a pencil. I'm gonna use a marker though because I want you to be able to see it really easily. So in the middle of your paper, go ahead and sketch out your name um, or write artist with me. One kind of way to do block letters is to first do the normal letter and then do a bubble or a block around it. So I will do pencil like that for my R and then kind of give it an outline by hovering around it. So that's one way you could do block letters. Okay, so AR and then Now, I would say usually when you do pop art, um, a lot of the words are capitalized, but I'm going to do it lowercase because I want to show you how stuff around the name will interact with it. Um, so basically to make it a little more complicated. So there's my funky artist name. Okay, so. As you see up here, there's a lot of layering. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick one of our style um, kind of borders to put around it. So let's do let's do a word bubble. Um, so go ahead and at the corner, maybe we'll do it right here. Do a little V. Um, so word bubbles can just be a circle, or they could be one of these other frames. So actually, let's mix it up. We're going to do that V, and then we are going to do a cloud. Okay. Now, inside that cloud, let's say I want a few things around the word artist. Kind of like how pop here has some spikes. So let's um let's make some spikes. I want you to imagine that the spikes are coming from the middle of this T right here. Um, so if you want to like lightly with a pencil, you could do some lines going outward that kind of guide like that. And then around those lines make spikes. Now the spikes will, they can touch or not touch. I'm going to have mine not touch, but they're going to go around and not touch the letters, giving the letters a little bit of space. If you start running lines into each other, it might start it might start to get kind of confusing looking. So I'm just gonna have it like that. Okay. Let me erase some of those lines so that way we can see what that looks like. Alright. Okay, after that I think I wanna add some more spikes. Why not? I'm gonna do them on the outside. A little easier with the clouds. Go ahead and add some more spikes the outside with the cloud. Not too many though. Now let's add some poofs. That kind of reminds me of clouds. For poofs, what we're going to do, we're going to do, let's say, let's start one here. Um, you're going to do kind of like a V that doesn't connect with some lines in between it. Then from that, the most outer edges of those lines, you're going to make a cloud. A few kind of bumps to make it look like it's a little more textural inside of it. Let's do another run down here. All right, got some funky artist stuff going on now. Um, Next, let's do and let's do an explosion. So there's spikes and then there's explosions. Um, you can see spikes are kind of like V's, where explosions are more like U's. So let's do one explosion up here. Um, and you kind of think about this is the middle that I'm pointing at, and you're gonna do kind of U shapes that go towards the middle. Let's do three. One, two. Mm, yeah, down here. Three going towards the middle. 
And then let's make those explosions have more accents. So like on the tips of the explosions, let's do triangles that are pointing towards that. So it looks like it's kind of like a burst. Try not to have them touch, but hey, that looks pretty good so far. Okay, so next we're gonna think about some texture. So I have like some polka dots and some stripes. Those are pretty, um, pretty big when it comes to style. So we're gonna add some of that to our artwork. Um, in terms of polka dots, polka dots are a general pattern. Um, they are sets of two rows. Usually they're one row spaced out like that. And then the next row is in the space in between. So you find the kind of the window, go down, put a polka dot there, put a polka dot there, find the space, put a polka dot there, find the space. The next row will look a lot like the top row in terms of alignment. So if you keep this even spacing, you actually kind of get these diamond shapes throughout it. Um, so if you connect the dots, they kind of look like that. So for adding some polka dots, let's add some to, let's say these big spaces right here. Um, you're gonna go ahead and make a row. Okay, let's go over there. And then you're gonna add the next row under it in the windows or the spaces. Now, I'm gonna keep going, then add my next row, and kind of reference the row two above. I guess you can kind of see that one. And let's just try to fill this a little more. Okay, one more, sure, why not? Um, for balance, let's try to do that somewhere else too. So let's maybe do it right across here. This is a nice space for that. Once again, finding the space, going in between, finding the space, going in between. Um, after that, let's go ahead and do some stripes. Stripes are pretty much also something that you see a lot in the pop art style. You can see mine in my area right there. And let's add stripes that are actually, hmm, let's pick a direction. Let's do stripes in the three of these. And oh, instead of normal stripes, let's do stripes that um, kind of go with the triangle. So uh, in a way, we're going to be doing stripes from one side, thick lines following that one side until it crams into the other corner. Uh, let's pick this side right here, stripe, stripe, stripe. And then this side right here, stripe, stripe, stripe. Uh, maybe do that in this one later when it's actually colored. Um, the last thing I kind of want to show you is radiating lines. So radiating lines are a good way to fill in the background. Um, they will kind of be like behind the general design. So let's first of all kind of block off our polka dots by adding lines to the edges of those sections. And let's give our poofs a closure. So then block off that section too. So everything kind of has its own space now. Um, for a bigger area like this, I might want to use a ruler um, or some sort of straight edge. So let's see here. I don't actually have a ruler next to me. I'm going to be using a paintbrush as my straight edge. Uh, so from the middle of artist, 
I'm going to, kind of like how we did the spikes, think about lines coming from the middle of my T. So I'm going to, it wouldn't go through artists, it would start kind of up here maybe. Go out like that. And see how I'm ignoring my actual design, but anywhere that there's background that's available and spaced out, it's there. Let's do another one, X this way. This is my design, this is my design. There's a space. Find the middle again, this is my design. All the way down to here, find a space. It's going pretty good. And let's do a few more. Skipping over things that I already colored. Okay. Well, that's pretty good for a few radiating lines. All right, so after this, um, we're just going to think about coloring for next week. So if you are done with your drawing, you can stop um, and then wait till next week, color it in, and then turn it in after that. Uh, I encourage you to color it the way you want it. It's just let's follow some of these tips for contrast and coloring because you really want it to pop out. So you can see there I used some yellow. And then after that, I'm gonna think about what is going to make it pop out more. So I didn't put the yellow right next to each other. Here's some other colors. Red is also warm, but it's a little darker. I also wanted to create balance by having my red be in different places, not just one. Did the same thing with my blue. And for my yellow, I actually chose purple next to it because that is the opposite. You can also leave some areas white. You do not have to color in everything, especially if it makes your pop art design pop out more. Um, I used markers. Look how I really just tried to fill the space so that the texture of the, um, the coloring didn't really interfere. So when you color in, try to color in really bright and really even so that way it once again highlights the design more than the texture. But once again, this is going to be um, an expectation of two weeks. The first week to draw, the second week you can do the coloring.